Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of CameraLabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief demonstration of two different anti-shake technologies in practice. One is built into the body of a digital SLR, and the other is built into a lens that attaches to a digital SLR. Now normally, depending on which manufacturer you go with, you either have one or the other. You very rarely get the chance to see both working on the same body in practice, but now, with the launch of the Olympus E510, we can actually see this working. So, here's the Olympus E510. This is a four-thirds body that has built-in stabilisation. It actually shifts the sensor inside the body to counteract camera shake. This is the Leica D 14 to 50mm lens, and it has built-in optical image stabilisation. This actually adjusts a glass element within the lens, again, to counteract camera shake. Now they're both standard 4 thirds products, so you can of course mount this lens on this body and now have a unique chance to compare the two different technologies directly against each other. So, which is going to work best of all? Is it going to be the optical system of the lens, the built-in system of the body, or is there in fact a possibility that if you have both systems working at the same time that you get double anti-shake? Let's find out. We're outside with the Olympus E510 and the Leica D 14 to 50 mm lens, and to demonstrate their respective anti-shake features, let's put the E510 into live view mode by pressing the monitor button to the right of the screen. This is now a live view of the scene in front of us, but even with the lens fully zoomed into 50 mm, it's not really magnified enough for you to see the anti-shake systems very effectively in practice. So we're going to use the E510's manual focus assist mode to take a closer look. You'll notice a green rectangle in the middle of the screen. This represents an area that the E510 can actually magnify to aid with manual focusing. Now we're actually just going to use this to have a closer look. So the first thing we're going to do to make sure it's sharp when we have a closer look is to autofocus the scene by pressing the AEL AFL button. Right, we're now confident that the scene is in focus. So if we move the green rectangle to the area that we want to magnify, say around that ridge area of the mountain as it meets the lake, now press the OK button and we get a magnified view. This is 10 times closer than we were before and you can see straight away that there's quite a lot of camera shake here. So first of all let's see how effective the stabilisation of the Leica lens is and to activate that you just flick a switch to the side of the lens barrel. Now it takes a couple of seconds to settle down but once it does you can see that stabilisation is pretty effective almost all of that shake has been eliminated. I'm just moving around the scene a little bit for you to have a closer look. And if I switch that stabilisation off, you can see the shakes come back straight away. So now let's have a look at how the E510 handles the same subject matter. If I press the IS button to the right of the screen, put it on IS mode 1, and then what you need to do is actually press and hold the IS button to see the effect in practice. So if I push it in, There you go. Now this demonstration only lasts for a couple of seconds. You've got to press the button in again if you'd like to see that. So I'll do it again. And you can see that's pretty effective. You can also hear a slight whirring sound in the background. That's the sound of the anti-shake system actually working in practice. I'll give you another demonstration of that by pressing and holding the IS button. pretty still. So let's go back to the lens stabilisation. I'm going to switch that on. So now that's the stabilisation with the lens. So let's see what happens if you actually want both systems working at the same time. So the lens stabilisation is currently activated and to see the in-camera stabilisation I press the IS button and hold it. Now you can see with both systems working at the same time the scene wobbles quite a lot. The in-camera stabilisation is just shut down there, so we're just using the lens. As you can see, it's perfectly steady. But if I try and use both at the same time, watch what happens again. As you can see, they're interfering with each other. Both image stabilisation technologies can clearly greatly reduce the effect of camera shake, but each has their own pros and cons in practice. The great benefit of an optically stabilised lens is that you can see the stabilising effect through the optical viewfinder and that's very very reassuring especially when you're using longer focal lengths. 
With this sort of system, you'll actually see the effect through the viewfinder and that makes it much easier to compose your shot. The other benefit of building it into the lens is that the manufacturer can actually tailor it to the specific requirements of that lens. So if you are using a particularly powerful or highly magnified lens, then the manufacturer has the opportunity to put in, let's say, more effective stabilisation facilities. But therein lies the problem with optical stabilisation. It does have to be built into the lens and that makes it more expensive on the lens. It makes the lens potentially bigger and heavier and there's also a concern that having a moving element within the barrel could have a detrimental effect on image quality. The great advantage to having stabilisation built into the camera body though is of course that it works with any lens you attach. New or old, you effectively get image stabilisation for free. That's a really compelling thing to think about. However, you won't see the effect of that stabilisation through the optical viewfinder, so you just have to take a leap of faith that the stabilisation really is working in practice. And that can be a little bit uncomfortable, especially again at longer focal lengths. However, of course, the great benefit of cameras like the Olympus E510 is their live view facility does actually let you preview the effect of the stabilisation on the screen, as we saw in the demonstration. There is, however, the concern that the stabilisation systems can only work so well within the body, regardless of the lens you attach. So as you go for longer and longer focal lengths, the system arguably becomes less effective. So pros and cons to each system in practice, and that's what you've got to weigh up if you're choosing one over the other. However, one thing's for certain. If you do have an Olympus E510 body and a Leica D 14 to 50 mm lens, then feel free to use either the lens's stabilisation or the camera's stabilisation. But as we saw in the demonstration, don't be tempted to use both at the same time. Sadly, you won't get double stabilisation. Instead, you get an interfering effect that just ain't pretty in practice. To find out more about image stabilisation, and in particular this lens and body combination, head over to www.cameralabs.com. There you'll also find a full review of the Leica lens and of the Olympus E510 body.